Your headlines, your campus, your voice. Presented by RMU students for RMU students. Join us as RMU Live begins now. Good evening and welcome to RMU Live for Tuesday, March 31st, 2009. I'm Mark Coddington. And I'm Andre Steed. Coming up on RMU Live, further developments involving the auto industry. But first up tonight, your computer could be at risk. It's no April Fool's joke. A nasty virus could be attacking computers worldwide tomorrow. The malware, also known as a worm, has been around since November of last year and makes changes in computer operating systems. The Army IT department is saying that certain online activities could lead some users especially vulnerable. Along with, along with these computers that have been kept up to date on their antivirus software, the Army network is also fully prepared for the malware attack and should experience no problems. We do provide SOFO software to all of our resident students. Um, you should be protected. Come on, take it. Take it. While playing a simple game of kickball in Washington County, some neighborhood children found a surprising discovery, a human skull on top of a tree trunk. Coroner Tim Morco stated in a news release that tests will be conducted on the skull to ensure that it is genuine, although he said all preliminary tests indicate that the skull is real. The skull appears to show no signs of trauma that would indicate foul play. Man or woman in Newcastle has been arrested for manufacturing methamphetamine out of the second floor bedroom of their home. Rocco Wing and Martha Mills allegedly concocted meth using Sudafed bought from five different area drug stores in order to make the illegal drug and distribute it in Butler and Lawrence counties. Mills' three children were said to be in the house at the time and danger from the combustible com chemicals excuse me, being used. Both suspects are looking at maximum penalties which include fines of at least half a million dollars and 100 years in prison. Just when it appears that things can't get any worse for the big automakers, a Uniontown car parts dealership makes a claim against Ford. Frank's Auto Supply, Inc. of Uniontown claims that Ford has unjustly copied their slogan, We Speak Car, a slogan that Frank's claims to have used for six years. The dealership wants a federal judge to order Ford to stop using the slogan and also seeks unspecified damages. The duties of the Army Police Department to some might be unknown, and Army Media Arts students Ed Albert and Nicole Story wanted to know more. They produced a documentary for Dr. Helena Van Hella's video field production class called Background Check, the Army Police Department. The production showcases the department's and its role on campus over the next few weeks. Army Live will show excerpts from the documentary, and this week is an overview of the department. Take a look. staff here at the, at the university. Uh, I've been here for four and a half years uh, and the staff has, has changed a little bit uh, with some officers leaving us and us hiring new ones. Uh, our, our department here on the Moon campus consists of 13 police officers uh, and the reason I say police officers we have a little bit of a different staff uh, at Pittsburgh and the Island Sports Center. Uh, the staff at both of those are uh, known as public safety officers. Public safety officers only have the authority to uh, stop and detain individuals uh, until a police officer gets there and, and is able to take control of that. Our police officers here on campus are all sworn law enforcement officers that have arrest powers. And we get our authority through uh, a uh, legislative act known as Act 501, and the University Board of Trustees gives us the authority to arrest people through that act. Now both of them all carry the same equipment. They all are armed uh, police officers or, or public safety officers. Uh, we all have handcuffs, we all have mace. Uh, everything that goes with the, a regular equipment that a municipal police department has. You know, you respond to alarm calls and domestics and, and, and crime incidences. Uh, you know, or just your typical days of having to unlock uh, classroom doors or open classroom buildings up and things like that. So it changes on a continuous basis. You know, just yesterday we were investigating a couple incidents on campus that, that were related to uh, some dorm rooms being broken into. It doesn't happen very often, but when we're out there and we do get those types of calls, we investigate them to the best of our ability. And yesterday was good because it came to a conclusion where we, were, we identified who was involved with it. And our goal was to try to get a student through four years of, uh, you know, education without getting into any major problems. 
Thanks again to Ed Albert and Nicole Story for that piece. Army Live will have more from Background Check in the coming weeks. Coming up after the break, continuing trouble in the auto industries. Plus, Channing Frampton has your local weather forecast. One day, you were simply struggling to be a dad. The next, you're coping with a diagnosis of childhood cancer. CureSearch.org can help. It's run by doctors and scientists whose research has led to an overall cure rate of 78%. You're not as alone as you feel. In the classroom, I turn my head over this way, and there's a game banger looking at me. You know, Mad Dog me throwing signs up under the table. I feel real scared for my life. And during that time, I wouldn't go to school. My mom would tell me, like, what are you doing for yourself? You're not doing nothing. She encouraged me to go back to school. My neighborhood is a dangerous place. What's pushed me to graduate is my mother walking down the aisle, hearing her scream for me. I want to graduate from my mom. She watched the distance yell at me, you got to graduate. You got to get out of high school so you can get your diploma. And I'm going to make it, and I'm going to be somebody in life. My pot of gold, your daddy's little girl till heaven home. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. President Obama is playing hardball with the big automakers GM and Chrysler over the use of federal bailout money. The president says that GM will be given 60 days and Chrysler 30 to restructure in a way that can make companies viable to continue receiving bailout money. Chrysler is already dealing with a tough financial situation as they are currently in merger proceedings with Italian automaker Fiat. But what I can promise you is this, I will fight for you. You're the reason I'm here today. I got my start fighting for working families in the shadows of a shuttered steel plant. I wake up every single day asking myself, what can I do to give you and working people all across this country a fair shot at the American dream? President Obama's statement comes on the heels of another shakeup for General Motors. Early on Monday, GM CEO Rick Wagner announced his resignation from the company, saying that it was a necessary part of the bailout plan for him to step aside. Wagner will be replaced by Fritz Henderson, the president and chief operating officer of GM. Wagner gave praise to Henderson, saying he is the ideal person to lead the company. Controversy is surrounding the shooting death of a young man by police in California. 23-year-old Stephen Willis was shot by Fresno police after officers said they were likely to be fired upon. However, Willis's parents claimed that he was target shooting the day before and simply taking his gun out of the trunk when the police confronted him. Willis had a scholarship to ITT and was at the top of his graduating class. Attorneys are planning to file a wrongful death lawsuit against the Fresno Police Department. Authorities in Canada believe they have uncovered a major computer spying operation. The investigation into the spy ring has been ongoing for 10 months. The ring consists of 1,300 computers in over 100 countries. The investigation began after the Dalai Lama believed his computer was hacked, but upon further review, the Tibetan leader was one of many on a long list of victims, including embassies, government departments, and financial institutions worldwide. Although some evidence points to a being Chinese intelligence operation, their government denies involvement. Whether we're dining in or eating out, we sometimes end up with leftovers on our plate. But did you ever consider turning scraps into energy? That's what they're doing in Singapore. Food that's been thrown away from restaurants is being stored in collection tanks filled with a type of bacteria. The bacteria eats away at the scraps, releasing methane gas, which is used to generate electricity. Weather. Oh, you know what? Spring is finally here. It's beautiful. I'm so excited. It's been cold a couple of times, but you know, you know what? I think it's just trying to push into the season. Snowing yesterday morning. Oh, yeah. Wahoo Hap. 
Who snows uh, who in snows, the morning? Who snows in the morning? Apparently that, the weather does. Yeah. Well, hopefully Channing can tell us if we're ever going to have snow again. Yeah. Channing, tell us. Well, guys, I can tell you that there is no snow in the forecast coming up. In fact, all we can see are clear, sunny skies for the Frampton forecast today. In fact, if we take a look at the current conditions outside, I can tell you that it's really looking good outside. If you take a look at it, temperatures are running about 59 degrees outside. That's, that's pretty warm for this time of year. And let's take a look at what's going on outside. We have temperatures running about 59 degrees here in Moon Township with a dew point of about 30 degrees, humidity is at 33%, that's pretty dry for this time of year, and the pressure is at 29.25 inches, winds southeast at 10 miles per hour, so it's bringing that warm, warm Gulf air up, and that's what's giving the warm temperatures for this time of year, but we'll get into that later. Around the region, let's take a look. Beaver Falls, 59 degrees. Burgettstown, 60 degrees. And we have in Greensburg, 56. And in Catanning, 56 as well. We're holding at 59 back here in Pittsburgh. And if we take a look at a bigger picture, let's take a look at the, these temperatures. 53 in Detroit, 59 in Fort Wayne, 70 down in Lexington, very warm down in Kentucky. And we have 52 up in Erie and 55 in Detroit. Now, let's take a look at the forecast for tonight. Clear skies. That's why it's going to get down to below freeze and 28 degrees. So those daffodils that are coming up for spring, they're going to get frozen off, unfortunately. Our almanac for today, uh, actual high of 62 degrees this afternoon, our low 29. Normals for this time of year are 55 and 34. And our records are 82 degrees for a high and 11 degrees for a low. Now, if we take a look at the forecast, this is what our weather map looks like right now. We have this cold front out here in the Midwest, and that's going to be bringing some colder temperatures and some rain showers, along with this warm front that's draped across the Ohio River Valley. It's going to move up through, and if we take a look at the weather map for Wednesday, we see that, that it's going to change as this cold front begins to move through the area. We'll see rain showers begin to come into the area through tonight and the last throughout the day tomorrow as that low pressure system wraps up around into Canada. But our forecast looks like this uh, for tomorrow. 54 degrees, chance of rain throughout the day. I know that sounds kind of sad after what we had today for really nice weather, but as far as the five day forecast is concerned, it looks a lot better because temperatures are going to be climbing up to 64 degrees for Thursday, nice sunny skies. And on your Saturday, you'll have a t high temperature of 61 degrees with sun, a little rain in between on Friday, but overall a really nice looking forecast. If I do say so myself, gentlemen. Channing, you never cease to amaze me. It sounds great. Now, here we are. There have been good teams and bad teams, but now we're down to the, the last Final few. Final four, yeah. Justin, tell us all about it. Thanks, guys. Coming up in sports, the final four teams in the basketball tournament are set. Plus, the Pittsburgh Penguins took the ice on Saturday in hopes of making a comeback run in the Eastern standings. And speaking of comebacks, a certain Tiger made one for the ages. All this is on the way next. But first, here is a look at the Athlete of the Week. Thanks again, sir. I look forward to being an asset to this company. My pleasure. You'll hear from us in about a week with our decision, okay? Sounds good. Thanks again. Wow. That young man has real potential to work here. I guess all we have left to do now is make sure there are no surprises on that face page thing. Well, I found something I think you'd like to see. Oh, that's a shame. Woo! <laughs> Truth. True. How'd you interview them? Oh man, I nailed it. It's in the can. Hey, you, man. Extreme behaviors have extreme costs. In sports, on the links, 26-year-old Sean O'Hare carried a five-stroke lead over the rest of the field heading into Sunday's final round of the Arnold Palmer Invitational. O'Hare was poised to easily capture his first-ever victory at Bay Hill along with his first career blue jacket, but on the tee box lurked a tiger, a tiger that had not smelled a victory since arthroscopic surgery on his left knee last April. That said, it wasn't long before the most feared predator on the PGA Tour had the young O'Hare switching his sights from blue to red. 
While Tiger wasn't the least bit ashamed to try on his six blue jacket, you get the feeling that the world's number one golfer wouldn't mind adding another green jacket to his already decorated wardrobe. And on the ice, the Pittsburgh Penguins entered Saturday's action against the New York Rangers, trying to rebound from a demoralizing 3-1 loss to the Philadelphia Flyers. Still, the Pens came into the game trying to make, a, trying to make good on a one, or an 8-1-1 one one record over their last 10 contests at Mellon Arena. Let's see how they fared against King Heinrich and the Rangers. Here we are in the middle of the first. Uh, Malkin's going to center a pass, and Matt Cook's going to chip this one in over Lundquist. And that puts the Pens up 2 to nothing. Now 2 to 1. The Rangers on the attack. It's going to be Dubinsky receiving a pass from Jaredev. The wraparound, he gets his behind Flurry. That ties it up with just five seconds left in the first. But early in the second, the Pens off the rush. Scuderi, after a great defensive play, gets the puck up ice. It's Ruslan Fedotenko with a beautiful fake to stall. Beats Heinrich Lundqvist short side. But the Rangers come right back. Girardi to Drury. The rebound's going to get picked up in front by the 6'6", Antropov, and Flurry doesn't have a chance. It was an incredible close game up until this. Crosby, the lead pass from Fedotenko, splits the defenders, and he's going to beat Lundqvist like a redded mule. Penguins are ecstatic. They win the game 4-3. And, you know, Grandma's happy, so everybody's happy. The Pens are going to improve to 14-2-3 under Dan Bosma, and Sid the Kid extends his point streak to 15 games. And now as we look at the Eastern Conference standings, the Pens currently sit sixth in the East, but there is a lot of hockey still to play. Pittsburgh currently has one game in hand over the fifth-seeded Carolina Hurricanes and could easily jump to fourth in the conference with a solid stretch to finish off the regular season. While a, Pennsylvania, while a Pennsylvania battle between the Pens and Flyers would be fun to watch, look out for the Hurricanes, who, like the Pens, are 7-1-2 in their last 10 games. The Pens will look to continue their winning ways against the New Jersey Devils in Mellon Arena tomorrow night at 7.30. Switching gears now from the ice to the hardwood, the Pitt Panthers met their match on Saturday when they were defeated by their cross-state rival, the Villanova Wildcats. The three teams joining them in Detroit are North Carolina, Michigan State, the Yukon Huskies. While Villanova may be playing the best basketball at the moment, you would be hard-pressed, though, to find a more talented team than the Tar Heels. Yet, how could anyone go against the size and athleticism of the Huskies? The other team to watch out for in this scenario is the Michigan State Spartans, who, of course, defeated the Robert Morris Colonials in the first round. No matter what happens, the Final Four promises to, to deliver all the madness we have come to expect from the month of March, and it should be exciting to watch. This has been Justin Downs with Sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Justin. Now we have the Beginsky Report. The commentary made by Chris Beginsky do not reflect the opinion of RMU or the Academic Media Center. Chris, tell us what's on your mind. Just recently, an interview with President Obama aired on 60 Minutes, and lo and behold, the president laughed during the interview. You're probably thinking, but Chris, why should I care if the leader of the free world laughed during an interview, even though there's a lot of problems with the country at this point in time? That is a pretty good question, RMU Live viewer, and the answer is you really shouldn't care. But for some reason, some people are making a big deal about this. Apparently in tough times, you're not allowed to laugh, and things have to be as drab and depressing as your typical Linkin Park song. But the president showcased that sometimes, even when things are going bad, you just have to laugh. It sure beats crying. The only thing that bothers me about this is I know that if Bush did the same thing, he'd be crucified on pretty much every news channel, website, and blog. But since old Barry has been heralded as the Messiah by just about everybody, he gets a free pass, except from a few people who really need to lighten up and perhaps have a laugh themselves. Well, that was a Chris Beginsky report. Uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, you know, not half bad. So mm -hmm. what do you think about that? President Barack Obama laughing during the I don't uh, think he's the Messiah times? necessarily, but, you know, the I, he's I mean, allowed I could, to laugh. I could see it. He's allowed to Hair laugh. Hair like wool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, this has been RME Live. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Uh, make sure to tune in next week at 5.30, Channel 98. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. And uh, make sure to check out CSE and all the other Robert Morris shows on Have Channel 98, also MTVU. Some pretty snazzy videos there. See you guys next week. <laughs>